Different raw materials are available to suit different applications. Engineers must understand the critical properties of these materials. Most commonly used polymers are polyester, polypropylene, high-density polyethylene. Each has different characteristics with respect to UV resistance, pH tolerance, melt point, strength and elongation. For example, most geomembranes are made from high-density polyethylene, whilst geotextiles are either polyester or polypropylene. When using a geotextile and geomembrane in a containment application, an engineer needs to ensure these products are compatible with the chemistry of the waste material. Products should never be taken on face value. Some sort of assurance is required that it meets the designer's specification. There are many variables from sourcing of raw materials to manufacturing, local conditions and testing effectiveness. Designers must be very clear on the performance criteria they require and validate that the actual product delivered meets the specification. It is not sufficient to accept the claims of a data sheet or product brochure. Reputable manufacturers and suppliers will provide minimum performance values and stand behind their testing data. There are well-established testing regimes in use around the world to assist engineers with the specification of products. Local or regional laboratories are available to test the materials or products. Here is a non-woven geotextile being tested for strength. Here is a geosynthetic clay liner being tested for compatibility with a specific waste leachate. Design engineers need to look beyond the functions of different geosynthetic products to the properties of their raw materials. Likewise, the actual performance of the delivered product must be assured. Through this introductory discussion on geosynthetics, we outlined the application areas where geosynthetics are used, such as in the mining industry. We also introduced the functions performed by geosynthetics, such as the containment functions required in landfills. We then examined the various geosynthetic product categories and touched on some manufacturing and quality assurance issues. So the next time you are driving along, you may wish to examine the structures used in road projects, such as retaining walls, bridges, the road itself, and ask yourself what geosynthetic products were used in this project and what function are they performing? Thanks to the following companies which supplied images or contributed to the development of this unit. This lecture series was funded and created by International Fibre Centre, TTNA, the Monash Geomechanics Group at Monash University.